Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Exotic Astrology, and we are back with the Bhagavad Gita series again. So, if you have not watched the earlier videos, then please watch. Otherwise, you may be clueless about what I am speaking here. And in the 14th verse of the second chapter, we saw the famous shloka where Krishna said. The non-permanent appearance of happiness and distress and their disappearance in due course are like the appearance and disappearance of winter and summer seasons. They arise from sense perception, O Siyan of Bharata, and one must learn to tolerate them without being disturbed. And in the 15th verse, we saw where Krishna explains to Arjuna, O oh, best among men, Arjuna, the person who is not disturbed by happiness and distress and is steady in both is certainly eligible for liberation. Alright, and finally, today we reach the uh, 16th chapter, if I am right. Uh, sorry, the 16th verse, I mean, of the second chapter. Alright, so this verse is also a very important verse because... You'll come to know why. <laughs> All right. So before uh, we start, we'd like to offer prayers to our preceptors who have helped us to gain this knowledge. Oma Gyan Timirandhasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha. And yes, if you are new to the channel, then please subscribe to it and please watch the videos in this Bhagavad Gita playlist. And if you want a consultation from me, you can always go down to the website below in the description section. And yes, God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will specially find him when reading the Bhagavad Gita because this is Krishna himself is speaking this. All right. Okay, so we will recite the shloka ones. The second chapter, 16th verse. Okay. Nasato vidyate bhavo nabhavo vidyate sata ubhayor api drishto netas tui anyos tattva darshibhi. The translation is as follows Those who are seers of the truth have concluded that of the non existent, which is the material body, there is no endurance, and of the eternal, which is the soul, there is no change. This they have concluded by studying the nature of both. Let's read it again. Those who are seers of the truth have concluded that of the non-existent, that means the material body, there is no endurance. And of the eternal soul, there is no change. They, this they have concluded by studying the nature of both. So let us go to the purport. There is no endurance of the changing body. That the body is changing every moment by the actions and reactions of the different cells is admitted by modern medical science. And thus growth and old age are taking place in the body. But the spirit soul exists permanently, remaining the same despite all changes of the body and the mind. That is the difference between matter and spirit. Wow. By nature, the body is ever-changing and the soul is eternal. This conclusion is established by all classes of seers of the truth, both impersonalists and personalists. In the Vishnu Purans 2.12.38, it is stated that Vishnu and his abodes all have self-illuminated spiritual existence. The shloka says, Jyotis, Jyotimsi Vishnur Bhuvanani Vishnu. Wow, new shloka I've heard. <laughs> the words existent and non-existent refer only to spirit and matter. This is very important. That is the version of all seers of truth. This is the beginning of instruction by the Lord to the living entities who are bewildered by the influence of ignorance. That is why we sing this uh, prayer before starting. Om Agyan Timiran Dhasya Gyanan Jana Shalakaya. Because the Guru removes the ignorance from the disciple's life. And 
that's why it's written here this is the beginning of the instruction by the lord to the living entity so this is the first instruction which krishna is giving krishna is distinguishing here between matter and spirit matter is temporary and spirit is permanent matter always changes and spirit never changes that is the beginning of the instruction by the lord to the living entities who are bewildered by the influence of ignorance tamoguna tamas removal of ignorance involve involves the re establishment of the eternal relationship between the worshipper and the worshipable and the consequent understanding of the difference between the part and parcel living entities and the supreme personality of godhead so when you say that somebody is in ignorance what does it mean it means that that person doesn't know who is the worshipper and who is worshipable so he is the he or she is the worshipper and krishna is the worshipable that who does not know is said to be in ignorance he is in tamoguna and also the consequent understanding of the difference between the part and parcel living entities who is the part and parcel living entity the person himself the soul and the supreme personality of godhead who is krishna himself so one who does not know the difference between this two he and krishna is also in ignorance one can understand the nature of the supreme by thorough study of one self wow the difference between one self and the supreme being understood as the relationship between the part and the whole so the example is given of the finger you know the finger is a part and the body is the whole so the relationship between the soul and god is like that of part and the whole so god is the perfect complete whole <laughs> as the shopnishad says you know om purnamidam that famous shloka is there and the living being is the part and parcel so he is like the part okay now why does it say here one can understand the nature of the supreme by thorough study of one's self the difference between one's self and the supreme being as understood by the difference between the part and the whole so why does it say here that to understand the supreme we have to understand ourselves or we can understand ourselves and then we can understand the supreme being why does it say because the living being and god are one in uh, quality which means they are both eternal they are full of satchit ananda they are full of satchit ananda means eternity knowledge and bliss full of these three things qualitatively they are same but quantitatively they are different quantitatively the living being is tiny but quantitatively god is fully infinite he is complete in himself and the living being is also complete in himself because he is uh, he is connected to somebody who is complete but when the living being comes to this material world the living being becomes uh, incomplete that is why you will always see people are searching for things to become complete they are searching for mobile they are searching for laptop to become happy to feel feel fulfilled they are searching for man is searching for a woman a woman is searching for a man and married people are searching for children then so many things you know kids they are searching for video games people who are uh, in teenage you know they are searching for members of the opposite sex to enjoy and ruin their lives <laughs> and also there are people who are searching things like wine alcohol cigarettes smoking drinking watching pornography indulging into prostitution so many things people do why because they they feel that there is a sense of lack in them there is a sense of emptiness there is a sense of void inside them which perpetually keeps them in this uh, illusion that they can be happy and because because of that void they try to fill it by material substances which is not possible because the soul is inherently spiritual 
so uh, the spirit cannot be satisfied by matter it, it, it is somehow not possible it's like an incompatible situation as the scripture say so what what is the uh, what is the remedy for all these hankerings the remedy is we should understand that we are inherently complete but when we realize the relationship with the complete being ultimately who is complete who is god himself so to the degree we are elevated in our realization of the fact that god is complete and we are also complete as his part and parcels to the degree we are connected to him to that degree we will feel that we are complete and to the degree we are away from that conclusion from that realization to that degree we will feel incomplete to that degree we will feel empty to that degree we will feel hollow inside we will be unhappy we will be miserable we will be angry and frustrated <laughs> and to the degree we are elevated spiritually so what does it mean when we always keep saying uh, um, spiritual elevation what does it mean when you say spiritual elevation no? spiritual elevation means your appreciation for god has increased so imagine uh, a normal person goes and sees a deity of krishna vishnu or ram in the temple and suppose he has uh, elevated his consciousness to to a certain extent primarily but he is still in the materialistic realm so then what happens he sees the deity of krishna suppose he goes to vrindavan and he sees you know, the beautiful uh, radha sham sundar deity then what happens now imagine a perfected soul somebody like arjuna or you know yudhishthir maharaj or dhruva maharaj or prithu maharaj if these personalities appear in front of him and they see krishna's deity then what happens what is the difference well they are seeing the same deity but this neophyte who has just started with his spiritual journey he will not be able to appreciate the form of krishna very much he will think oh maybe uh, krishna is there but i can't see this deity looks like a stone you know it just looks like a idol i don't may yeah maybe krishna that deity is krishna but you know i can't experience krishna doesn't smile at me krishna doesn't talk to me maybe i will uh, so e even if he sees he uh, cannot perceive it or uh, he doesn't uh, he is not very much attracted to the deity form you know but the same deity form if uh, some perfected being they come and see then they they will not see that as a krishna's deity or you know idol or any material thing they will directly feel that he look krishna is standing there so that is the difference because uh, he or she is elevated enough to have that connection like for example um in kanchipuram there was the great uh, devotee of lord varadara his name is kanchipurna so any time uh, there would be some confusion he used to directly go and ask to lord varadara the deity of varadara who is varadara himself and varadara used to answer to him so that is how we can become complete and that is how we can realize that we do not need anything of this material world to make us complete we just need god that is he, he is all that we need of course to sustain ourselves to maintain ourselves we need food we need to you know, or we need to have a job or our business or uh, we also need to get married and have children those things are fine we we are not saying that nothing of that is required till the time we are in this material realm these things are required and we have to do our responsibility towards our husband wife children parents everybody but we have to understand gradually that the things that we are doing now in this realm at a materialistic level that is not the ultimate goal of life the ultimate goal of life is uh, not to just have a job and then save money and retire and do nothing have you seen retired people just ruining and wasting and destroying their lives by watching tv or by you know doing gossip or by doing nothing simply old people unfortunately you no know, and the goal of life is also not to get married and have children 
that is not the goal of life the goal of life is also not to say stay, stay single and boast that no oh, i can stay single you see no i don't need a man or i don't need a woman that that is also not the goal of life you are single or you're married or you have a job or a business or you have a family it doesn't matter the goal of life is very clear to elevate our consciousness spiritually so actually it is not elevating our consciousness it's like elevating ourselves because we are the consciousness we are, we are consciousness we are not this body <laughs> so let us proceed to the last paragraph okay so one can understand the nature of the supreme by thorough study of oneself the difference between oneself and the supreme being understood as the relationship between the part and the whole uh, yeah regarding this part and the whole i forgot to say so this is a very important concept that we have to understand the part and the whole because like they say you know, the hand hand is a part of the body you know, but the hand cannot be happy in itself how can the hand be happy the hand can only be happy when you are assisting the body in eating something so that the stomach will digest and then the body gets energy so the example is given imagine there is a some you know food item and the hand just takes it like this and the hand is just you know trying to eat the item like this do you think uh, the hand will be very happy no the hand will be miserable because after some time because ultimately the hand's strength and happiness is till the time when he is connected to the body if i cut this finger and throw it after within a fraction of seconds i will not even want to look at that finger no but till the time this index finger is there in my hand it looks very beautiful to me at least <laughs> why because this is connected to me so similarly one who is connected to god is very beautiful because he is connected to the source of beauty that is that that is why he is very beautiful and beauty not uh, on a physical sense but you know, overall at a level of uh, eternity the person is very beautiful as shrimad bhagavatam says you know hara vasudeva bhagavati bhakti rakinchana sarvair gunais tatra samasate sura hara va bhaktasya kuto mahad guna manorathe nasati dhavato bahi one who is devoted to lord vasudev he is the epitome of all the uh, divine virtuous qualities so therefore if the part has to be happy then the part has to serve the whole so when we serve god so what can the hand do to make itself happy the hand can take the food and put it inside and then when the stomach does the job only then now how the, only then the hand can be happy because then the energy goes to the hands also how can the legs be happy the legs cannot be happy in uh, just trying to uh, mingle some food <laughs> it can't be happy like that. the the legs can be happy by assisting the body by walking and going to a shop and buying some vegetables and then coming back to the home and then cooking and then eating this is how the legs can be happy the legs cannot be happy by you know just dancing or by just jumping the legs will not be able to function one day right so imagine if the hand protests no i will not serve this body you know i will just have my own independent existence cut me and throw me off then what will happen yes cut the hand and throw it then what happens after some time it just disappears have you seen leaves being separated from the tree from the root what happens after some time it turns pale and it just disappears nobody is even interested to see you know? imagine a flower which is there in the tree but if you pluck it and throw it then after one or two days you can't even see it becomes abominable why because now the flower is not connected to the tree anymore so that is what is our predicament we have lost the connection with the supreme whole that is uh, krishna himself and that is why we have uh, lost the our situation is like this finger you know who, who is cut 
and then who has fallen down and then now we are searching oh where i can get food no you cannot get food and become happy like that if the thing the and the and the best part is the hand doesn't have to do anything in deep, anything separately to become happy so the only thing the hand has to do is assist the stomach in eating that is all the stomach will do the rest of the work the hand doesn't have to worry about food yes so the hand just has to assist the body and then it can become happy automatically as a result of uh, cooperating in the act of eating so when the hand cooperates then by default the hand is very happy otherwise if the hand says no 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 i i will not cooperate you know why should i feed the stomach you know i will feed myself i will go and feed me but no you can't do that because the hand doesn't the finger doesn't have the mechanism to do that that is our predicament we we are also trying to rebel against god we are also trying to say oh you know we are not follow religion we will not follow the texts of the scriptures or we will not follow the scriptures the word of the scriptures we will do what we want we will do what my mind says yes today we will run from this girl to that boy you know so many things we have been doing but we are not happy we are miserable empty and hollow deep down inside why because we have everything but we don't have the connection right so once we have the connection to the part to the whole then the part is automatically satisfied without doing anything only thing is the part has to assist the whole that is all the part has to do nothing else okay in the vedanta sutras as well as in the shrimad bhagavatam the supreme has been accepted as the origin of all emanations nityo nityanam chetana chetananam eko bahunam yo vidadati kama very 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 famous shloka this is the supreme has been accepted as the origin of all emanations in shrimad bhagavatam where is this said you know लिविंग एंटिटीज बिलोंग टू दी सुपीरियर नेचर एज इट विल बी रिवील इन दी सेवन चैप्टर although there is no difference between the energy and the energetic the energetic is accepted as the supreme and the energy or nature is accepted as the subordinate the living entities therefore are always subordinate to the supreme lord as in the case of the master and the servant or the teacher and the taught such clear knowledge is impossible to understand under the spell of ignorance vinasha kale viprit buddhi as they say and to drive away such ignorance the lord teaches the bhagavad gita for the enlightenment of all living entities for all the time all right so that is the conclusion of this verse that we are actually eternal and to the degree we are connected to the eternal source who is god we will stay at a spiritual level okay so it's like you know touching a electric socket you know, imagine you go and touch it you also get a electric shock you know 100 200 maybe million volt <laughs> so god is like that uh, energy source of uh, completeness and happiness you know he is full of satchidananda so then so when we are connected then we also become happy so as they say you know that Uh, a hand which distributes uh, more uh, roses is more fragrant why because the the rose the roses are fragrant but we we may not be fragrant but because we are in contact with the rose you know our hand also becomes fragrant fragrant so that is what happens if you see you know if you see this cover of, of the bhagavad gita properly then what do you see you know you see uh, arjuna is there and you see krishna is there you know these two personalities so therefore although krishna is god and arjuna is just a insignificant living entity in front of krishna but just see you know they are together so and just see here now 
you know, again Krishna is here, then Arjuna is here. Sometimes Arjuna looks more prominent because Arjuna is standing and fighting and Krishna is sitting. So that is the beauty. You see, although Krishna is God, but because Arjuna is in contact with Krishna, therefore it is appearing as if, you know, he is also equally powerful as Krishna. But that's not true. But what I am trying to say is, because he is connected to Krishna, he is so glorious. And the sloka says, you know, Narayanam Namaskrityam Naram Cheva Narottamam Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Tato Jaya Mudirai. You know, that I offer my respects to the best of the Purushas, who is Nara, who is Arjun himself. All right. And Krishna says, you know, Bhakto Sime Sakha Chete, that because you are my devotee, so I am revealing all this knowledge to you. Raja Vidya, Raja Guyam. That sloka also says, that this is the king of all knowledge. Thank you very much. So let us try to be complete and not need anything else of this material world by still doing our material duties and completing our responsibilities and being situated properly in this material world and trying to elevate our consciousness to the spiritual realm. All right. Thank you very much for your patience and if you are new to the channel, then please subscribe to it. And if you have not watched the videos from this playlist, then please watch. And by that, you can get more insights to the Gita. Okay. And if you want a consultation from me, you can always go to my website down below. God is there with you all the time. Uh, just like he's there with Arjuna always. He's also there with you. <laughs> right. Thank you very much. See you again.